Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I am in beautiful Atlantic City, New Jersey. I would show you outside, but I can't figure out how to make it go through the reflecting glass mirror wall thing. Anyways, um, I'm about to play day two of the World Poker Tour event. On day one, I got off to a pretty good start. I think I got to about 70,000 chips, which is pretty good. We started at 30,000. But um, then I lost with Ace-King versus Ace-Jack preflop, which was unfortunate. Um, it was a fun hand, actually. A guy raised under the gun, I believe, to... What did he make it? I think he made it 600. I made it 1600 with Ace-King, and then he made it 6500 out of his, like, 14,000 chip stacks. I'm like, huh? Maybe he just has it. But no, I got it all in. He snapped me off, and he had Ace-Jack, so I lost that one. And then a little while later... Against a good kid. I forget which good kid it was. My memory is really bad with this stuff. This is why I write down all of my hands. If you have not checked out the video where I show you how to write down my hands, it's jonathanlittlepoker.com slash notes. It's a um, pretty, pretty useful video, I think. Anyways, um, I flopped a set against the good kid, and he check-raised all in on the turn. He had, he had ace-10 of hearts on 5-4-3 with two hearts. 5-4-3-9 or something like that. And I had pocket fives. And he got there on the river. So that sort of crippled me. And then from there, just nothing happened. There's actually, my bust out hand on that day was kind of a tough one because I had 12,000 chips, which is not very many. And the blinds were 300 to 600. And someone raised from middle, uh, earlier middle position to 2.3 big blinds, so like 1,300 or so or 1,400. And then this kid acted kind of weird and then called. And it just didn't quite feel right. And... The thing is that this is a rebuy tournament, and so during the last two hours or so, I'm trying to get a hold of some chips or go broke. I'm not trying to go broke, obviously, but I want to get some chips because I know I can rebuy the next day and have 30000 at a probably a very soft table. So I decided to shove with Ace-5 suited in the small blind, and I think online this would just be a super standard shove most of the time, but here it just didn't feel right. Anyways, even if it doesn't feel right, unless the guy has aces, I'm not in terrible, god-awful shape or anything. Anyways, first guy folded, and then other kid had aces, so I was out. And he actually made a comment about how, oh, this is a pretty good hand to bust aces with, and it brought back horror stories in my mind. One time in a World Series event, probably three or four years ago, we were down to something like 20 people in a 5K. Um, and I had pocket aces, the other guy had ace five suited, and he decided to put some insane play on me for like 500 big blinds or something absurd. We both had something like 250 big blinds. We were both chip leaders. And I had the aces, he had the ace five, and he beat me. <laughs> so that brought back horror stories, and then of course I didn't get lucky on the guy, but that's fine, I don't want to get lucky for 12,000 chips. Uh, then today, or well yesterday, I played again, I got off to a kind of rocky start, I was playing at a six-handed table with a bunch of players who seemed fairly passive, uh, I was just not making many hands, and I may have been paying off my opponents too light on the river, there were three spots where I had something like top pair, top kicker on the river early, and my opponents took fairly strong lines, and I just paid them off and they always showed me a set. But luckily, it didn't cost me anything because we started at 50 100 with 30,000 chips, and I got down to 20,000, and it's usually because my opponents just didn't apply a ton of pressure. They would just, like, check-raise small on the turn, then bet small on the river. And if they check-raise bigger on the turn and then bet bigger on the river, I probably just would have paid them. <laughs> Gives them a calling station. And uh, so I was down to 20K, but then I made a flush. I had ace-3 of spades on... I guess, I'll t I guess I'll tell you the hand. It was a fun one. Someone raised from under the gun to 200, and then someone in second position made it 500. And I decided to call in third position. I usually am not a big advocate of, advocate of cold calling raises or re-raises, but in that situation, I thought that the person who re-raised had a very strong hand. And ace three suited, if I have to put in 500 out of my 20K in position, is usually going to be a pretty good thing for me. So I called, initial raiser called. It came 866 with two spades. The person who made a 500 bet, something like 1,000, I called, other guy folded, turn was a two of spades. The person checked, I bet 2,800, and the person called, river was a blank, whatever it was. That person checked, I bet, uh, I believe it was like 11,000, so I blasted it, and the person snap called, so maybe I didn't even bet enough. <laughs> um, and obviously, they had the overpair of some sort and acted like they got super unlucky. But in reality, that's a spot where you have to recognize your overpair is in a really bad spot versus someone who is going to be playing a lot of hands in position in an intelligent manner. So that was that. I got back up to a lot of, oh, like probably like 45,000 early. And um, 
I don't really remember what else happened. I got a hold of some chips. And at the end of the day, that same person had, well, someone raised someone, and that person called his lady. She called. I had pocket jacks, and I re-raised from the button, I think. Um, initial raiser fold that lady called. It came king jack four, two clubs. She checked, I bet, fairly large. I bet 6,700, so I must have made it 5K pre-flop. Or I don't remember what I made. I remember I bet 6,700 on the flop, which was kind of big. She called. Turn was an eight off suit. She checked, I bet, 13-3. So I'm, like, ramping it up. I'm trying to get stacks in, obviously. She called. River was a two of clubs or something like that. It put up the flush, and she led 15K into the, whatever it was, 45K pot or something. And I don't really see I can fold a set there. So I called. She had queen eight of clubs. So called the raise, called the three bet, then obviously didn't fold. But that's fine. And then after the hand, there was this other guy at the table who was sort of berating her. She kept saying she was three to one to win. He's like, you're not three to one. You're four to one or worse. And she's like, no, I'm three to one. I know my math. And it's funny because I guess she thought I had ace king or something because she kept saying like, oh, I had an eight. I know my pairs were good. It's always funny whenever people give analysis at the table and – Almost everyone at the table knows they're wrong except for that person. It's sort of an interesting dynamic. Obviously, I didn't say anything. I just sat there and, you know, didn't say anything. That's probably what you should be doing. I have no desire to correct my opponents at the poker table if they're going to be saying things that are blatantly incorrect. That, that makes me happy to hear it because, you know, got the opponent to put a lot of money in out of position. And the, the real issue is that she got there on the river, and then she did not get fully paid. If she checked that river, I was probably just going to bet big again, assuming she had a king a lot of the time or maybe even like an underset or something insane. I did not really think she would just call preflop with a lot of hands that have flush draws that were not the nut flush draw, so I didn't think she'd be check calling down big bets. But she did. And uh, that left me with 50,000 to end the day, and that's pretty much where I ended with. So going into today, we're playing 400, 800. I have 50K. It's not a great stack. I, I like to have lots of chips, but I don't. Um, but that's okay. So that's it for Atlantic City. I was thinking I'm going to show you guys my room because it would be fun. Why not? And I was also going to show you how I make my morning breakfast in my hotel room. And also where I work out. Why not? I'll just give you guys the whole tour. So I'm going to post a video right behind this one not on JonathanLittlePoker.com. Also, you can just find it on my YouTube channel. Check it out. Thank you guys for watching.